All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Coffee Break podcast. This is episode number 19, season one, episode 19. I decided this week that I was going to start calling it season one because I think in 2019 we're going to switch to season two. Ah, nice. It's a thing I'm trying. I don't know. We'll see if it sure with it or not. Sure, it'll work. (laughs) (laughs) But we're really excited to be here today. Another Coffee Break podcast episode. And today we have a special guest in the studio, Janine Bithel from Rosewood Co. Is that how you? That is it. That's her name. (laughs) Uh, And uh, so we'll get in. We'll get into a little bit. But by way of introduction, um, I we have I have known about you and watched some of your company grow for a while. But this is really kind of one of the first times that we've ever met in person and had Mm -hmm. a conversation. So this should be really fun and exciting. Yeah. And thank you very much for coming down and visiting with us. Thank you for having me. This is actually my first podcast experience. Really? As a business owner. Well. (laughs) Uh, here's the thing though i don't think that there's many of them that are like this yeah yeah (laughs) a lot of a lot of them are are uh, are a couple of cell phones sitting around in a in a coffee shop that are recording oh wow well then this is really legit yeah yeah this is (laughs) we we try to take this thing up a notch uh but anyway we're really excited to be here um we've got a lot of conversation so by way of introduction Mm -hmm. uh tell us a little bit about yourself a little background just who you are where, where 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 we come from here Got it. Um, I'll do my best. So my name's Janine. Uh, I own a business called Rosewood Co. We build handcrafted custom tables. And the reason we do that, though, is because I have just um, become really passionate about what happens around a table. Mm -hmm. Um, I did not realize this, but the average family in America only ends up spending 37 minutes together around it like together on any given weekday gotcha so i'm like 37 minutes that's like nothing in your day so my um our approach is that if we can provide a table and take back intention at this place in the home where first like all life i'm like we gather to eat we gather to sit and be with one another around a table that's usually when the phones turn off and you can just kind of be present um then that's like that's just our whole intention with building quality uh, custom tables and so that's what we do that's why we do it because i care about what happens around the table um and it's really just me i'm the lead designer carpenter (laughs) accountant and all the all of the above um and it's something i never saw coming i went to school for church leadership and marriage and family counseling which i also wasn't able to finish because the bank kind of cut me off with loans halfway through um and then i found this and i've i've loved it so so okay so (laughs) (laughs) that's like i know that's a lot (laughs) let's let's jump from going to school for for church leadership and for counseling and going into handcrafted wood tables yeah like carpentry that's one and the same right yeah 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 that's (laughs) you took shop class in college and you just said hey this is better like how did you make that jump Uh, what what kind of sparked all that So rewind when I was really little, Um, I have a craftsman of a dad who can build and fix anything and two older brothers. So naturally, I was always trying to keep up with them. Uh, And so I was always following my dad around building whatever he was building in the garage. I just was really fascinated with it. And built, I needed a table for myself in college because I was really poor and couldn't afford one. So me and my dad built my first table. And then when I moved back home, because bank cut me off, mm-hmm. had nothing, I gave away the table because I didn't need it, couldn't afford my own place anymore. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, and then after I gave that first table away, um, then I just got a few commissions because then friends and family saw that, like, this is really pretty. Like, can yeah. I have one? And that's then how the chain reaction began in yeah. a nutshell. So it's um, back to like college and stuff. I, they really don't go together at all yeah um i still always wanted to work for a nonprofit or a church but the way we're incorporating that now is that we donate um a portion of our proceeds to a local orphanage okay and that's what i like found this whole big discovery of like oh i love running a business because you can control it yeah so we're able to then support these places that i would have wanted to have worked for at one point but now we're calling the shots and being able to 
Yeah. So it's it's interesting. You know, we we've had this conversation. I feel like a dozen times through this podcast, and and even in these four walls here in this mm-hmm. organization about experiences bringing you to certain points. Yeah. So uh, some some look at at something like that from the output and go, okay, so college experience didn't go as planned. Mm-hmm. But there's a there's a little pocket there that you just said that that launch something new right Mm -hmm. you build a table out of necessity in college then gave it away Mm -hmm. right and it's like the original rosewood co prototype just (laughs) given away and now it has opened up a concept because it was if that if if all you you back up if all of those things would not have happened would it have launched this particular endeavor no i never wanted to own a business no never thought i could yeah it's interesting. Yeah. And origin stories like that are really cool to me because mm-hmm. it's like, okay, why? And and you laid out very, very well um, in the very beginning that, that the why behind your business is not to build tables. It's not to mass produce tables. It is to create a space for people, for families to come around mm-hmm. and, and, and spend time together. Yeah. That's, that's a really cool aspect because, you know, when you're talking about service businesses, when you're talking about manufacturing facilities, you're making widgets, you're making things, mm-hmm. but what is the reason for the thing? What is the reason why you're doing what yeah. you're doing? That's, that's a really interesting approach. Thank you. And it's funny, I was listening to another podcast yesterday um, and it was interviewing the owner of Tom's Shoes and he, they were talking about how um, because they're so um, adamant about why they make the shoes mm-hmm. and now like sunglasses and eyewear, they're like, even if the world never needed another pair of shoes, we would still have a business because our why is so like bold and adamant and that's our brand. Yeah. So it's kind of like this, like, it's not that it, you put it there because it's your safety net, but it's like this double edged edge sword that you have because your why is so prominent. Like I couldn't like, it would take a lot of work, but I think if like, tables were never needed we went through a big recession we could still like pivot the business to then go off of because your home matters because being with people around you matters and we want to create a space to cultivate those conversations yeah no it's it's interesting we we so here at lock dock security Mm -hmm. we 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 make keys and locks and cameras and all that (laughs) stuff but our big thing is that we're constantly always improving so Mm -hmm. it's you know how can we build a better team how can we how can we invest in people to become better individuals and and we do that through the services that we offer, but that's not like that's not the reason that we go about it. You know, mm-hmm. it's you have to have a different level or else it's it, it just becomes futile at some point. Yeah. So um, it's interesting. So let's get into so we, we kind of got the why behind why the business got started yeah. and kind of the origin of that. Where did the name come from? How where what was what's the thought process behind that? Because I want to dive into moving forward. Um, your your business the aesthetic the 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 look and the feel mm-hmm. of rosewood co is something uh very um unique so how did the name come about and then how did you move into all those things so the name is nothing very fancy it's um i was sitting down after i gave the table away and saw that a few people were showing some interest and i was right away thinking about how like in 10 years this is going to be some big operation and i'm just going to take over the world with it basically and so i was planning out how this was all going to look and be so i hopped on etsy right away and just started playing around with like opening up a shop on there gotcha. and so on etsy no two shops can have the same name mm. so you have to be really clever with the names and that's why some of the names are really crazy cuz they're all like taken up so I was just sitting there on my laptop thinking of things that might be a cool name (laughs) for a table business and then Rosewood just kind of popped in my head and so I typed in (laughs) um yeah nothing cool I'm like sorry there's no creative process of how this happened I'm like holy spirit divine moment I don't know but it it was there was no other companies on Etsy named Rosewood well no that's how the RSWD came about so Rosewood was taken Uh. Rosewood Co was also taken so then I was like oh shoot um maybe initials what's what are the initials of Rosewood Co gotcha so then that's how we got RSWD and that's how our name came about. There you go. Yeah. And the and so moving into that, you and this is one of the reasons why, you know, you you'd kind of been a target on one of my guest lists for a while because I've I've watched you from a distance build a kind of a brand, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and that is always interesting to me. The 
the way people build brands and the way brands come to life. But then, you know, because I know I know your dad, Tom, and kind of hearing from his perspective mm-hmm. and then also seeing it on the front end and watching that thing come to life has been really cool. So talk us through a little bit about that, because I think from our audience perspective, <coughs> you've got a lot of small business owners. You've got a lot of people in in these areas that are that this is a this is a conversation how do you how do you build a brand how do you maintain that brand because Mm -hmm. you go to your instagram page you go to your facebook page you go to your website it the aesthetics of all of it flows very well you know Mm -hmm. it it, you if you see it you know it yeah how what what's your concept behind that what's your thought process behind how that works so first of all thank you because i've spent a lot of (laughs) a lot of hours on all of that um and i take a lot of pride in that because i I'm slowly been learning um, with my no business experience or background that this stuff really matters and it could be a make or break for people. Um, And I think that's just because I I took that all personally when I was looking for businesses to be a part of or the businesses that I want to invest in. All of those things really mattered for me and all of those things were um, what made me stay on their website or not. You know, because like uh, I know a lot, it's uh, something I've heard from Donald Miller. It's called the grunt test. Mm -hmm. And it's like you pretty much have 10 seconds to either get someone's attention to actually scroll on your page or they're going to click X. Yep. So that was kind of, um, I didn't realize that's what I was doing, but that's what I was doing from the get go. So I just knew I wanted this to be really pretty. (laughs) As like elementary as that sounds in the beginning when I like did not know what I was doing. I wanted it to look good. I wanted it to have this look and appeal that I've seen on other brands that I wanted to be a part of. Yeah. So uh, that was just personal experience. And uh, yeah, I guess, does that answer? No, it does. And so so you mentioned Donald Miller. Yes. Story brand. Love him. which Which is really cool. And that whole concept of of making it simple for people to kind of understand mm-hmm. what's going on because yeah. people that are confused aren't going to do anything. And you know, you've, you can go to a million websites out there that have custom woodwork on it. And the, the look of it, it's probably going to have some wood grain, you know, mm-hmm. graphics and mm-hmm. all that. It's like, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but you come into something that's, it's kind of that bright white. It's that vibrant. Mm-hmm. It kind of shows, what you're about but it really kind of captures your attention and keeps you there yeah and that's what I think it kind of goes back to our why so the yeah I build tables but why I do it is the part that I'm really trying to I guess sell yeah and so that's why I um, wanted to have these big photos that were really bright and white that really kind of tried to capture the feeling of what I was trying to say um, so I would just say also, like, I, I got really lucky in the beginning. The person I gave the very first table to, she's a professional photographer. And so wow. out of just <laughs> photographing her own home, I would say, like, could you text me these photos? <laughs> She'd send them to me. And then that became my website background. There you go. Um, so if you're starting a business, photos are, like, your most important thing. Because I think that's how I captured a lot of people's attention really fast. Mm-hmm. They would say, these photos are amazing. Um, so to invest in a photographer. It's, it's so well invest in photographer or learn how to do it yeah or do it yourself it's it's it, the concept that that is so prevalent in in small business that is is so simple that we miss a lot mm-hmm. is uh that you can have the best products you can have the best service you can have all of the best of everything but if you don't know how to tell your story yeah. if you don't know how to communicate that to your consumer it's it's lost yeah and um and, and lo- it's it's difficult for a lot of people to do that like because and, and here's the reason why in my perspective is when you have a business uh, handcraft tables handcrafted wood tables or uh, a locksmith security company the people that are typically j- started that business and the people that typically are operating that business are doers and makers and they're not storytellers. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not people that can communicate that thought out very well. Yeah. And so you you very infrequently find somebody that can do both mm-hmm. or can adapt to both, mm-hmm. um, and then and then from that it explodes. So let's let's talk about that. So you you kind of created a brand, kind of a, a, an aesthetic of what you want this thing to look like, and then you know so you're launching that through a website. You've got your Instagram, social media stuff. Instagram, mm-hmm. you you got on there and started building an audience. How did that look? What, what were some of the, if, if, if a company out there is getting started, 
uh, they're trying to learn how to get into that type of thing. What yeah. are some tips, some tricks that you could say, hey, these are some things that I learned or maybe some these are some things I stumbled on mm -hmm. through that process building that brand? I would say um, figure out what you want it to look like for right now. And I say that to like loop back to that in a second. So figure out what you what your business is now and what you want it to look like now and then just do that and be completely consistent. Show up, set yourself like I'm going to show up for 3 to 4 times a week on Instagram post and show up 5 to 7 times on stories a week and just be consistent through and through. Um with the type of shots you're doing, with the type of content you're putting out, um even like jot down a list like post a picture with myself in it once a week post a picture of our content on a white on like a white backdrop once a week post a picture of our shop once a week and like keep those on a retainer and just keep mm. filling in the blank a yep. different thing in that category um because that's just an easy way to get consistency in um and then because what i found is our my our instagram followers in the beginning they were not our clients mm-hmm and they really did not start showing up as our clients until more so this is this year, which is year two. So the, it's like the whole first year was building a trust and a relationship with them. And then now they've been following along with us for so long, they're ready to commit yeah. and make a purchase with us, which is so, um, so flattering. And so like, I appreciate it so much that they've followed with us through the journey for so long and now they've become clients. So, um, and then it's also a big part is listening to what they're responding to so like for example i'm learning that people like we're at this point now where actually a photo of just a really pretty table doesn't get as much engagement on instagram as if a photo of me in the shop gotcha and so i'm learning that they want to see the face behind the story yeah. they want to they they're human so they care about what's happening to the human on the other side um it's not like something to kind of promote myself and sure. because I want to be in front of the camera it's because I want to connect to that human interaction piece yeah well I mean it, there's a, a part a part of it is okay you see this 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 amazing table but mm -hmm. now you're seeing the process of that table being built now you've got this kind of ownership of it. it's like hey that's that's my table you know that was that was that's my you know live edge you know whatever that's coming at yeah. like <laughs> that's mine and i saw it there you know so mm -hmm. you kind of have that connection with the process yeah. not just the product yeah that's very interesting so m moving along that process so uh, i i you can correct me if i'm wrong mm -hmm. you have gotten through some of those things a couple of different sponsorships and a couple of different opportunities yes with some tool manufacturers mm -hmm. how did that come about that's that's pretty amazing it, it's so amazing it was one of our goals from the beginning was to be in a point where we could get some uh partnerships with different businesses so we are sponsored by rigid power tools um and the way that that came about was uh actually it was kind of really cool i followed another woodworker on instagram and i noticed not in this might sound like a little shallow but i'm like i feel like it's part of the instagram math so i noticed she had less followers than me and less engagement but she was sponsored by rigid power tools so I was like well that's awesome for her i'm really proud of her but i'm like i want in on that <laughs> like i'm i'm showing up with like more content more often more followers more engagement how do i get that so i i just messaged her yeah. and because we had like had a small relationship going with another woodworker and that's another thing i would say with social is find other people in your industry and link arms with them like don't focus on the competition aspect of it yeah. figure out how you can both help each other because you both offer something different yeah. even though you're kind of in the same trade but i asked her like how did are you sponsored with the uh, rigid power tools how did that happen and she was like oh i met him at this trade show here's his email contact i'd love for you to even like get in touch with them and i was like oh my god <laughs> thank you like that was a lot this easier is than amazing. I expected. <laughs> exactly so i emailed the guy then we ended up scheduling a phone call he's a super nice guy christian fa like has um a family and he loved what we were doing and so he was like over the moon excited to stand behind us yeah. and support us in what we're doing and then also me i'm like i love their power tools they're such like high quality mm -hmm. and so we're working with exotic woods a lot and for people who don't know their wood math like pallet wood is made from pine it's really soft it's going to break easily so you don't need a really s powerful saw or power tool to work with that but some of these exotic woods we're working with are really hard and dense and heavy and so the cheaper manufactured 
tools can't hold up. Mm. They'll burn, I'll burn out the motors on them really quickly. So rigid power tools can keep up with these exotic woods. So that's why I was so excited to be able to like both of us be promoting each other yeah. in so, a sense. So basically know what you're looking for, find your goal and then yeah. s- start the process of, yeah, just start talking yeah. to people. Um, Cause I mean like, more often than not, you know somebody who kn- who either is that person or knows somebody else yeah. of who you're looking for. You know what's interesting <laughs> in that conversation? It's it, uh, especially in the world of social media because we're we play in that world and we're you know we're trying to learn and grow. But it's you know, hey, why am I not getting engagement? Or why you know why this get engagement versus because you're that? not engaging? It's, it's like. <laughs> Well, maybe you should start the conversation. Yeah. That's a very simple. Yeah, start method. liking other people's stuff. Start commenting. Start resharing. Yeah. I mean, it's you got to get out there and be interactive too. I mean, it, it's the same with face to face networking because yeah. that's been a big part of our growing too. Is I've gone out there, I've had coffee dates and lunch dates with interior designers and other small business owners, and it's it's getting out there and talking. It's it. it I've been doing this exercise with this podcast specifically of reaching out to people all through Instagram or different um, different mediums, LinkedIn mm-hmm. and different things like that, to, to get them to become guests on on the show. And it's like that is to to me because I'm not big in that like you know cold call like you no know, who, who but is? but I I've, I've found <laughs> that there's a lot of people that enjoy that and and it's, and some people it works very great for them so it's like props to them I'm not yeah. bashing it. <laughs> It's just not my thing. Yes. <laughs> but uh, but I've found that the more that I'm doing it, that the more people are willing to say, yeah, that'd be fun. Mm-hmm. You know, like, hey, you want to meet for coffee? Yeah, I would. And the reason that I've kind of turned that way is that I have found that for myself. I've had a lot of people reach out to me. Hey, can we meet for coffee? I want to mm-hmm. chat about this. Can we go meet for lunch? Sure. I don't know you, but why not? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, what do I have to lose from it? And so it's kind of just taking that, taking that first step to reach out to somebody and say, "Hey, is can we learn from each other? Can mm-hmm. we grow with mm-hmm. each other?" Um, and that's a really, a really exciting thing. From a business aspect, kind of jumping back and forth here. From a business aspect, what are some things that you that were you just blindsided you? Things that you didn't expect. Things that you were like tracking down a certain path and then all of a sudden wham yeah where did this come from yeah well there, there's been plenty of those <laughs> i'll say that um and this might be a li- it's might come across really elementary but this is also from the person who i'm two years into this and i never ever saw myself owning a business so uh i was blindsided by how um how much i was gonna have to pay in taxes yeah. and fees <laughs> uh when it comes to buying and selling because it it was very humbling to realize i'm like oh that dollar amount you see online when you buy something they don't get all of that yeah <laughs> at all <laughs> so um that was definitely something to navigate through and we took a few hits on um because it's just it's like a dance learning like quarterly taxes yearly taxes finding the right accountant okay this accountant doesn't work for this gotta let them go now and find somebody else and um just all of that and then figuring out like okay like where are margins at um we have to okay so if we're selling this product we have to be bringing in at least this much to be able to pay all these other buckets yeah. of where this money is going to go. Cause it's like, yeah, say I'm going to charge a hundred dollars or something, but then, okay, $20 of that has to go to this bucket. $17 has to go to this bucket and so on. So learning all of that was took, took a while and I'm still learning it. Um, I did not expect the burnout I got at like end of first of year one, full time year one. Uh, it, it was like winter time and I had just, had like a really long fall season of Mm -hmm. just going 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 and then business kind of just went dead silent as soon as like december through february hit of last year and for the first time i was like i don't want to look at another piece of wood i do not want to try to (laughs) create any kind of content i don't want to pick up my phone for instagram um and that scared me and then because I, I, I know i was like why am i feeling this way i and then i like i was got hard on myself mentally and I'm like I shouldn't feel this way I shouldn't be thinking this but it's normal yeah so I think I wish I like I mean I just I didn't you hear that it's gonna happen that people are gonna face burnout you're not gonna want to show up to your job even though it's your dream job yeah but it still is gonna happen um because we're human and we're gonna over exhaust ourselves so uh I did not expect the burnout so to compensate that I would say um 
I've been learning practices of how to make sure I'm make, taking care of myself mentally yep. so that I can show up physically to produce these products, but then also mentally to be there for the website and Instagram because that still has to keep showing up every day, yeah. even if I'm exhausted. Um, so I didn't expect the burnout and didn't expect it to just be so up and down. Yeah. I think I was just like, oh, this is going to be amazing and I'm just going to excel and be the next HGTV like Magnolia home star like it's gonna be perfect um but it's been none of that yeah yeah so uh just well, I, but yeah. it's funny it's funny you say that because I think I think everybody that's been in business and, and and especially in the marketing side of things you go through those different ups and downs mm -hmm. but even even the Chip and Joanna Gaines like how many years did they invest in just doing yeah before before all of a sudden somebody picked up and now they've got this explosive just like I don't even mm -hmm. know craziness down mm -hmm. in in Texas but it wasn't like it was just an overnight thing no, you not know, at it, all. it was this, it was a long process yeah. with a lot of failures mm -hmm. and then once they kind of created that audience and that loyal audience then everything I mean they everything they touch just turned to gold it turns to gold yeah because because it but it and, and a lot of times people that's the that's the uh, discouraging thing for small business owners mm -hmm. and operators is that you're watching and you're working and you're you're exhausting yourself on all these things and you're seeing other people's successes and you're like well well that's not fair you know mm -hmm. like I'm doing that but you don't realize well they've been failing for 15 years yeah. and then all of a sudden they finally got a break mm -hmm. and they're just going oh goodness <laughs> like how long can I hold on to this yeah. you know, because of, because of all the effort that I put in? And so it's it's interesting when you, you get to chat with other people like that and understand that you're not the only person that's kind of gone through that. Mm -hmm. it, it helps you to understand, well, it's not the end of the world. You know, yeah. Let's keep plugging away. And I think it took some learning, too, of like, okay, well, all right, I understand, yes, it took them like 25 years to get there or whatever. But then it's like, okay, so – it still might take me 25 years, but I there's still good enough things going on right now that I can still be like living the dream right now. Yeah. And it's just perspective and mindset work to no. make to be able to get yourself in a healthy place where you are. Yeah, you, you have to appreciate your successes, whatever level that you're at. Yes. Um, and I, I had a video about this, uh, I don't know, a couple months ago. That is our drive for success overshadowing what we should be grateful for now mm -hmm. you know like you know because you get around certain driven people certain people that are like you know i'm going here i'm going here i'm going here and all these all these small little things that you're winning at now you just brush right over it you yeah know? You've, you've got a lot to be thankful for and grateful for right in this moment but you're blindsided by where you're headed in the future mm -hmm. you know, or you're, you've got tunnel vision for the future so you're just ignoring all the good things now yeah exactly. it's, a, it's a hard thing to process completely and it's just it's something that you have to have grace with yourself be like I'm still gonna be figuring this out over and over like I'm gonna be able to focus on my wins some days but then I'm gonna t like I've blown past a lot of my wins lately um and that like recently got me in like a really negative mindset yeah and then I had to break out of that and be like <laughs> okay like no we are doing well We've been alive for two years now, yeah, so, and we're growing. So no, I, I'm, it, 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 you, we're we're talking the same language because you know you go through these these highs and lows, and it's like, are is this working? Are we doing are we doing it right? Yeah, like was this a stupid idea? Like I've asked my family and friends that I'm like, you guys would tell me if this was just like <laughs> you're not just being nice. Yeah, right? I'm like you're not thinking in the back of your mind like what is she doing? She's wasting her time. Yeah, <laughs> I I got a I got a message from a, a guy on Instagram this morning with a picture. Basically, they were welcoming some new team members, mm -hmm. and he had taken an idea that we had here and replicated it there. Mm -hmm. And I was like, in the midst of a lot of other things that you can just sit there and focus on, this is not going right, this is not going right, this is not going right, and then you get something like that, and it's like, okay, you yeah. know, this is encouraging. Yeah. It makes my day. Yeah. So one of those things for you, West Elm, mm -hmm. all right? T tell us about that. You've got – you. you you're featured with West Elm. You still sell product in the store. Like that's a pretty big deal. I, you walk through the store <laughs> and you're like, Hey, these are really cool things. I think I'll sell something in here. Tell us, <laughs> tell us about that. So <laughs> that's another thing that was kind of like really a mind blowing. Oh my gosh. I can't believe this actually happened in our first year. Um, so I saw on Instagram of all places, West Elm corporate had posted that they ha were having a call for local makers, mm -hmm. um, at all of the local West Elms, specifically furniture makers. And I was like, 
yes, Lord, you hear me. Um, <laughs> hey, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, I was aware that West Elm has local makers in their stores. And I always thought that was so cool. And instantly I was like, once I started having a business where we make stuff, I was like, oh, I want to be in West Elm. Um, so I applied online. It was just like applying for a job. You know, you f- go on, fill out the application, send a few photos in. Then it was an interview. So I went into our local West Elm here in Charlotte, interviewed with the managers there. And then the next was to get like a call back to see if you're like a finalist. And um, so it took a little while. I found out I was a finalist. Then dead silence for months. And so uh, tell, I'm sharing this part to just be like, it took several, several months and to like finalize the communication to actually figure out that I was accepted into their local maker program. Hmm. Um, and it's no fault on West Elm's part. I think it was the it like somebody had to remind me that they're human still. Yeah. The managers there, I'm like, they're still overwhelmed every day like you're overwhelmed and they forget to respond to emails like you are. So like when you're responding to them, I'm like, be human back. Just email them and say, hey, I'm sure you have a lot on your plate. Could I like take you to coffee and can we chat about this further of how it'd be such a great partnership for our businesses to come together? And that's what I did. Mm -hmm. And then that got her attention and we sat down and that helped kind of lay down a really awesome foundation for my relationship with them because they saw that I was like humanizing them. I wasn't thinking them as some big corporate corporation that was doing me wrong by not responding to the little business. Um, and then they're like, oh, she's legit. She really wants to be a part of our business. And like now two years later, I have this amazing relationship with the managers here at our store and with corporate. And I feel like for being such a big chain store, they really want to see me succeed. Yeah. And that's huge. And like, where can you find that from a corporation as large as West Elm, which is under the umbrella of William Sonoma Inc. Um, so then it was create once I found out I was in the program from corporate, it was creating SKUs, figuring out margins. And so technically our stuff is available for their store, but we're actually still figuring out what items are going to be selling there. Gotcha. It's it, there's a lot of it's a like, process. It's a long process. Yes. Um, because with selling really big, expensive tables, there isn't a lot of room for margins. Oh, yeah. And so Thankfully, now that we have these serving boards and smaller end um, pieces that are easier to obtain, those are on the floor now, and then those are selling really well. Um, that's awesome. So yeah, it's. I ho- does that answer? No, that's the that's, question? that's exciting. I mean, you, so you you start something, you look for opportunities to continue to partnership and and uh, offer it in you. It's it's okay in, in the world, right? You've got your Etsy shop. You've mm-hmm. got your Instagram, your website. Mm-hmm. Well, those are those are some 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 really big platforms, mm-hmm. but there's also a lot of noise there. Yes, there's a lot of things happening. Any additional platform that you can that you can gain access to gives you that much more market share. There's people that will walk into West Elm that are not going to go on Etsy. Yeah, that will never see never see your mm-hmm. website or your Instagram, mm-hmm. and it's just looking for those additional market shares that you wouldn't have access to i mean it's the same way as you you could set up a shop at a farmer's market and have access to a completely different clientele Mm -hmm. you know and it's trying to find out what that what those markets are that you're trying to gain access to and then how to get exposure in those markets which is really cool there's processes to all of it it's not just immediate it took a long time and we still haven't we're still not done fine-tuning what um the relationship's going to continue to look like with yeah. West Elm. Um, but well, I would just say, like, the biggest thing that I think was helpful for us was another thing somebody told me before was, like, how can you make the yes easy for them? Yeah. So it's like, yeah, like, seek out where these um, – these spots might be for you to fit in and then figure out like learn their language so like I went on and researched a ton of West Elms and William Sonoma Inks like their um I'm blanking on the word but like their the values that they stand for and their goals for the year of 2018 2019 so that when I can come to the managers I can say like hey I know where you're headed. Yeah. This is where I can help benefit you in this area. You can benefit me in this area, and we both thrive. Creating value. Yes. Uh, and that, that's that's very complex, but it's also very very simplistic. You yeah. know, in in any process, you, you what what we're selling here, what you're selling is finding ways to create value for your customer, mm-hmm. not just to sell them something, but to create value for them. Mm-hmm. You know, um, which is a just a very interesting concept. I think our time has come to a close. We mm-hmm. are way over. 
over, actually. I just oh, looked no. at my clock for the first time. <laughs> but I, it has been a very awesome conversation, uh, very eye-opening, and uh, I, I know that uh, our audience will get a lot of it uh, out of it, and we appreciate your time um, and, uh, and taking time out of your schedule to come down here. Um, they can get a hold of you. We've got you tagged on all of our Facebook stuff, but if they're listening to this on the podcast afterwards, how can they get a hold of you? Yes, yeah, so Instagram, we are at RSWD Co., and then um, Facebook is Rosewood Co. Uh, you could we have a hashtag RSWD Co. And the website is RSWD.co. <laughs> so that's us. There you go. RS, RSWD, search it up co. and, and you'll yep. get there. Cool. Thank you, Janine. It's Thank been you so nice much, to, to talk with you and we look forward to another time. Yes, I love it. All right. We'll see you next week on uh, another brand new episode. Actually, it'll be our Christmas episode, episode 20. Um, next Tuesday, uh, special guest Ben Saltzy and Aaron Beaver will be with us. So look forward to that on next Tuesday. Have a great day.